All right, congratulations on finishing your assembly of your pegboard toy. It should look something like this. You should have two pegs inserted into the holes, um, the pegboard built in the middle, and then the two ends of the pegboard built on the sides. The pegs should be inserted such that they can move up and down through the holes, um, but notice if I'm moving side to side, the peg is still just sliding up and down. So it's been inserted, but it has been um, set such that it can still move like a peg would in a pegboard. The next step to become a level three inventor is going to be to create the working drawings for your thing so that somebody could actually go and build it. Somebody could see the uh, measurements and the design that you've constructed. The first step in making the working drawings is to actually start in your assembly file and you need to pay attention to from what view you're looking front on at your pegboard. So notice how if I'm at a back view, as it shows up in my upper right hand corner, I'm looking at the side. If I'm on the left, it looks like the front, but I'd put that extra little design on the front. So my front view is actually my right side, and that's going to be important when we do our drawing files. To create a drawing file, we're going to go up to our corner again and click the new and this time we're going to the third option, Drawing, and it's a standard .idw. And we'll click Create. And this creates the space that we're going to make our drawing on. Now, we want to go up here to Base. And we need to decide what the base view is going to be, what the main view is going to be on our page. This is where it was really important that I know what view I saw as the front side of my drawing. Now notice as I click on these in my orientation menu, it'll show me if I hover my mouse over here, I'm not clicking, I'm just hovering what that view will look like. So if I look from the top, the bottom, the left, the right. So I want to find a view that looks like that um, front view. And I'm going to change my scale. I'm going to scale it down a little bit so it's not as big. So I'm going to do one to two so that every inch becomes um, a half an inch in my drawing. And then I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice that it placed that front view on my piece of paper. Now as I move my mouse around, you can see that it's showing me the different view. So as I move up above, it's lining up a top view. As I move down below, it's lining up a bottom view. As I move to the left, it lines up that side view. I move this way, it lines up the right side view. So we know from our orthographic work that for an orthographic sketch, we're going to need that front view. We're going to need a top view. So there's my top. I just clicked it into place. And we're going to need a side view. So I'm going to drag over here and click that one into place. You can also do an isometric view up in the corner. So notice if I move at an angle, it makes me an isometric sketch in the corner and I can click that one into place. When I have my front view and my three other boxes clicked into place, I'm simply going to right click and click create. Now right now they're all kind of shoved on half of the piece of paper. So if I hover in the box, notice I'm not clicking on a certain thing. I'm hovering so that dotted box comes around it. I can move my drawings to the side. Because orthographics are all lined up with each other, you'll notice when I go to move it, that line's going to appear, and that's the only line I can move it on. I can't move my front view over here. So you can get it arranged how you'd like it to be. This one moves independently because it's an isometric, so it's not linked in directly with my other shapes. So now that I've created the orthographic sketch, we're going to do what we did with the last part of our packet, which would be to dimension it. So in my annotate menu up here, the second tab in, I can see a line that says dimension. And I can click on any line in my drawing, and it will tell me the dimension from when I designed that. So if I want to do the height of my shape, I can click on a line that would be the full height There we go. So I click on the top and the bottom of that line, and when I drag to the side, it tells me how tall that shape is. You can add other text in there as well. So if you wanted to 
put other things in about that, you could add that in there as well. So the last step to creating your working drawings would be to properly dimension them so that if I wanted to go build your part, I could go do that. So add any dimensions in there that we're going to need for your drawing to understand how big it is. I'll give you a hint, you need more dimensions than I have on here right now. Good luck creating your working drawings. Those are the basic steps. Hopefully you're able to complete this part of the process.